Right? So, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, today, we're going to cover the chapter 2 on our code, our subject, EAC 360, where on this code, you, uh, we will cover on the nature and scope of financial planning. Right? So, previous class was covered on the first chapter, where you will learn about the overview of financial planning, what is a financial planning, um, what is the law that go, uh, govern on that financial planning, example, uh, regulators, uh, the ethics, and so on. So, on this chapter, we learn about uh, the process, okay? And we learn about uh, some other information needed before we start on our financial planning, right? So, look on the outcome for the chapter today, right? So, the, there's a three outcome on this chapter, right? The first outcome, at the end of this chapter, the student should be able to explain the age, okay? The ages of financial health, okay? So, there's a seven age, if, if I'm not mistaken, right? And second one, at the end of this chapter, the student sh should be able to explain the financial planning process, right? So, actually, there's a, uh, a numbers of financial planning process, actually, but here I'm looking, I'm using uh, the material, the notes from uh, the textbook, okay? I take from the textbook, okay? I quote from the textbook, okay? Right, uh, there's another example um, I've been showing you on the notes that I post in the U future. So you on, you can look on the notes from your seniors that I post in the U future. So there's a uh, some different about financial planning process, but it's okay. As long as you can look, the process is almost uh, similar to any other process. So we consider is uh, there's a true process, right? And the last outcome for today is at the end of this chapter, the student should be able to explain the lifetime financial plan. Actually, the lifetime financial plan here means that you, uh, I, I'm going to uh, explain to you a bit about the whole syllabus of AC360 actually. Okay, so on the lifetime financial plan, it cover you on in terms of uh, budgeting, in terms of uh, insurance, uh, risk management, in terms of uh, tax, uh, some information about the tax, uh, in terms of retirement, in terms of uh, estate planning, and last part in terms of uh, how you're going to do on, uh, you comprise all the thing, you summarize all the thing, and you make it on uh, on a paper. May means that you're going to uh, plug in all the information from the things that you have, the asset you have, and put in the paper means that you put as you look on your asset, you look on your liabilities, you look on what's your leverage, what's your uh, um, uh, next word that you have. Okay, so that one, the last one. Okay, now we're going to look on the first outcome today. So the age or ages of financial health. Okay, as I mentioned to you, there's a seven, one, two, three four, five, six, seven, okay? There's a seven age of financial health, okay? It start with the age of birth and education, okay? Right, simple meaning, kita lahir, okay? Kita ada start dengan umur lahir, okay? Ataupun uh, apa ni tempoh lahir, so, okay, macam tu. Right, and tempoh belajar, right? So, that's why it, it's begin with the age of birth and education. Means that you're going to go to, I mean, you was went through all these things, okay? Um, preschool, you go to a kindergarten, you go to, you went through on the kindergarten uh, period, uh, you went through on the primary school, either uh, rural or urban area, uh, you went through also on the secondary school, either you are in a boarding school or in, um, I mean, uh, regular school, okay, as me, I'm going to all the regular school, okay, provided by the government, um, I start with the commands and then I go through for a uh, uh, sir. My school all in KL, so I'm sir. KL KL boy. Okay, right. You. Yeah. Uh, sir. Uh, ada ada yeah, yeah. Ad, uh, ada orang nak join ni meeting. Ada orang request. Saya saya tak uh, join lah. Saya tak oh. saya allow je semua. Oh ni. sebab oh. Ke saya kena accept. Saya tak sure sebab ada orang nak ada masuk. You join je. Saya dah allow untuk. Oh. Okay masuk, okay, eh. okay. Tak boleh saya ke? Tanya dia. 
Saya rasa saya dah allow open tu dah Ah, ha, Saya tak ada tekan apa-apa so you just join je Saya allow untuk masuk je Sebab saya dah turn on allow auto Right No, I'm repeat back Okay, so we start with the age of birth and education We went through all the school, primary school, secondary school Okay, right and Last but not least is tertiary education course. Currently you are went through, you are currently uh, finish up your diploma, which means mean that you are uh, in the third level of education. Okay, right. And might might be your further your degree and see your first degree, your second degree, your third degree. So these are the age of education. Okay, since we talk about age of education or, or age of birth. Okay. Uh, continue and continue and continue until uh, you die. Okay, means that the education, the education is a is a process of learning. So uh, the learning process is not is not stop on once you finish your diploma, once you finish your degree. Okay, as for me, my education level, my education uh, knowledge doesn't stop until I have the degree. I become a lecturer. I need to search on and look for another education course. Okay, might be learn on professional exam. And learn, learn how to be um, a professional workers in industry. I mean, it might be okay. Example, right? So, so in this age of education or in birth, okay. Example here, I put. So I say that family will plan, okay, for their future children, okay. So later on, once you graduate from diploma and you plan for marriage, okay, we talk about marriage later on, okay. So once you marry, you think about the f you, you should think about the future. You should think about your your uh, pension period. You should think about your uh, after marriage. Okay, after marriage period. Okay, and then you think about uh, buying a house. And the the core things is you should think about education. That's why our government put more money. Okay, or allocate more fund okay, in the any mission a in any mission plan or any mission budget focus more on education. That's the reason in UK why they provide free education because they want their citizen, their public, okay, to learn about education, to go to search and education. Right. So second phase is age of work. So once you have the knowledge, okay. Once you have uh, the input from the universities, either in universities or you get input from from any course. I mean, you didn't go to university, you go to the uh, college, okay, vocational college, any school. I mean, if uh, you didn't go through to the university school, you go to the academy, you go to aviation academy and as well, any things that relate to the, to the education course. Okay, so once you have finished the course, then now you think about how uh, to get the job. Okay, so um, sir, here, ada orang tak mention you. Yeah. Ada orang tak boleh masuk. Tak boleh masuk. Sekejap, sekejap. Saya rasa saya kena pergi sini balik. Right. Okay. Now, proceed back to the things. Right. So once uh, we talk about age of work, so once you you get a job, you think about uh, example for me. Okay. Um, once I finish my my degree, okay. Sorry, I once I finish my diploma, okay. I need to search on the job actually to look for the job, especially to pay back my loan, okay. Right during my diploma, I'm 
get the loan or get the, the fund from uh, PTPTN. Okay, so once you finish your diploma, later on, you should think on how to pay back the loan. Okay, right. And luckily, um, I've got extension from the PTPTN since I further my degree. Okay, right. And I further my master. So after I finish my master, then I pay back the loan. So it's important for us to to search and to look for uh, the best loan actually or if you can be able to get um, the fund I mean the scholarship actually is, is more is, is is much better actually okay right so example for me I'm get um, I'm being I was a scholar from uh, Petronas and UITM currently okay until now I'm, fin I'm just finished uh, the loan with the UITM okay right this is uh, whereby we need to search back to the to the company that provide you the fund so uh, I'm not lucky to work with the Petronas but I'm lucky work with the UITM okay so you need to pay back the loan okay right so once you finish the, your your uh, sorry once you looking for the job now you think about uh, some uh, expenditure that you need to to get into your life Example, once you finish, people will think that once they finish their, their degree or once they finish their second degree, the first thing that they must purchase or they must buy is car. So basically, those who finish their job, sorry, those who graduated from the university, they, they didn't have the money to pay car on the cash. Okay, so this time, so as for me, I, I'm I'm just finished my, my loan car. Okay, uh, they call uh, moto, okay, moto loan or car loan. Okay. Right, so this thing that you need to think about after you finish your your uh, education course or your degree level later on or diploma level later on. So here I mentioned, I said that you need to set fund. Okay, right. At least if example, let's say you want to purchase not a local car, not Produa, not uh, Proton. Okay, let's say you want to purchase a H car, H, okay, Honda, kan? Right, so the cost to purchase a car is not it's not cheaper, okay. So means that you need to allocate a sum of money purposely to pay for the deposit, okay. So for Honda, I mean uh, the imported car, at least ten percent. Uh, uh, VW, Volkswagen, BMW, Mini Cooper, they need ten percent from uh, uh, your money for purposely for the deposit, except we have except. If during the study you have the car, your own personal car given by your family, uh, parents, then this is different. Okay, those who need to uh, sorry, those who search for their own car, so these are the the journey that they, they need to face. Okay, right. Now you work, you have the job. Okay, you have the car now. So come to the third process, the third phase of age called age of merit. So, ada kereta, ada 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 kereta, ada rumah, ada rumah contoh, okay, right, uh, ada kerja, so mesti nak kahwin, right, so here, okay, wedding is not, sorry, marriage is not an easy process, okay, right, before married, after married, during married, this incur the cost, okay, right, before married, you need to think about um, uh, where to do uh the, the the wedding okay the ceremony uh i mean how many people that you're going to invite into your the, into your event okay right except you being sponsored by other party then this is a differ lah. okay right but if you need to plan by your own so this is all incur the cost okay right i mean the catering cost i mean the card okay and then uh some goodies get uh, will given to the to the people who come to the event or to the ceremony okay right so these are the things but before they actually you uh, the process to look on the partner the best partner okay right the partner that do you think okay will give you some uh, uh, call uh, give you uh, 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 a suitable king so okay can say it may be might be a suitable partner okay we don't know and you you also don't know your 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 best partner okay but searching and looking for the partner 
is also incurred the cost also. Okay, go through, uh, went through, uh, look on the partners. Okay, right. That's why uh, is is much better. Okay, this is my opinion. It's much better once you have the job, then later on you look on the partner. Okay, right. Kawan-kawan kat universiti ni boleh kawan lah. Tapi bila kerja tu, saya rasa di, that time memang you akan betul-betul dapat partner yang you think that uh, can provide you some breeding. Okay. Right. Uh, some uh, uh, opinion. Okay. Provide you an ear to listen to their problem. Okay. So, itu yang partner yang betul lah. Okay. Right. Tapi tak salah pun nak berkawan sekarang terpulang lah. Masing-masing ada dia punya syara kan. But then, these are the process on financial. Okay. All things include the cost. Okay. Right. So, once you're married. Okay. After married. So, during married, you think about, I uh, mean, the cost incurred. Uh, I mean, if you want to rent the hall. Okay. Right. And then, after married, you need to think about where to stay. Okay. And then, plan about uh, your uh, your parenthood. Okay. Right. Ada anak. Okay. Dan sebagainya. Sekolah kat mana. Duduk kat mana. Okay, right. So, ini semua. So, is this, this, all things include the cost. Okay, right. Next one, the fourth stage is about parenthood. Okay. Right, as I mentioned before, once you married, okay, and then think about um, be, ha having a child, having a daughter, okay, need to think about cost and other things. Okay, example. Okay, cost for delivery i mean birth delivery right um day by day year by year the cost are increasing okay right example cerita cakap senang kat sini kalau you bersalin kat hospital kerajaan pun bukan murah macam dulu okay and government hospital also divide into uh, uh, small cost and some a huge cost i mean almost like um private hospital but taklah sama sangat tapi lebih kurang cost je okay right and kalau you pergi hospital lebih mahal andora lah apalah avenisa lah apa-apa nama you name the private hospital delivery call i mean bird delivery is is much higher okay right normal delivery normal bird delivery might be charge you 3000 in, if you go to the private Okay, right. So, if you go to the government, might we charge you uh, 500, 300, I, I don't know the cost. Okay, right. right. But then, there's a cost here you need to pay. Okay, uh, you stay at the hospital. Okay, it also incur the cost also. Alright. And then, other things, medicine and so on. Okay, um, if you need the medicine and so on. Okay, so all things incur the cost. After marriage, okay, after being a parent, also incur the cost. Okay, right. Cost to buy pampers, cost to buy milk, cost to buy all things, all incur the cost. Okay, right. Recent case, we look on um, uh, the vaccine. Okay, if, uh, if you go to the KK, Clinic Kesehatan, under the government protection, then the cost lower. Okay, might be they charge you one, one ringgit or I think free. Okay, those who deliver uh, bird delivery in government hospital. Okay, you will go through, you will when, oh, sorry, go through all the process from the day one until the son or daughter age of six. And then you finish all the process of vaccine. Okay, 6 tahun anak tu kena dapatkan vaksin. Kena kena go through the vaksin. Start daripada umur kosong. Lepas tu, kita belum cerita lagi kalau anak tu kuning and jaundice. Okay, right. Belum cerita lagi kalau tu, anak tu prolong jaundice. Okay, so ini semua incur the cost. Right, so there's a cost that you need to think. Right, and bila kita tahu, contohnya ada, ada, ada apa? Ada, ada anak nanti. Okay, you should think about insurance protection. You are alone, tak payah risau sangat dengan insurance ni. Tak payah lagu tak apa kan. Sebab you sorang-sorang. Anything happen to you, then uh, tak ada orang nak risau except your parents lah. Tapi bila you dah ada family, okay, uh, you you are, kalau you lelaki, lagi lah. You are the head of the family. You should think about the protection, protection for the family. Okay, right. 
So that's why there's a reason why government okay are uh, encourage uh, people in Malaysia to purchase insurance as early as the son or daughter or the child age zero. Okay. At the same time, also go through on the education loan. Okay. Right. Join SSPN ke dan sebagainya. Ini adalah uh, encourage. Okay. Uh, some of uh, encouragement by the government. Okay. Why? Because of later on in future, if anything happen to you, you have this uh, uh, the sum of money that you have to provide your son for survival. We we say we talk about the survival here. Okay. Right. Next one. Settle on parenthood. Now we look on career development. Okay. Right. So here. Uh, it is important for us to reduce our burden, especially on cost of living. COL is cost of living. Okay, right. In order to reduce the cost of living, okay, you need to look into uh, the job or the profession that provide you a quite high salary. Okay, right. I didn't mention here those who stay in uh, urban area. Okay, right. So it's much cost incurred to them. Okay. Duduk menjadi rakyat bandar ataupun menjadi penduduk bandar ni cost dia sangat tinggi. Bukan cost rendah. Sebab apa cost dia tinggi? Sebab anything incurred cost. Okay. Uh, you go uh, to your office using public transport incurred cost. You drive the car also incurred cost. Okay. Nak makan pun incurred cost bukan murah. Okay. Sewa rumah. Uh, kalau you tak di rumah you kena sewa rumah. Sewa rumah pun bukan murah. KL sewa rumah. 700 tak lari, 1000, saya rasa 700 tak, tak ada, 1000 tak lari, 1500, 2000, okay, right, Klang Valley, okay, we talk about Klang Valley, right, and uh, once our nation plan to be a developed nation, these are the things that you need to go through, to went through, to face into, okay, right, so this, this is the, the, the core things that incur on the career development, okay, again, once your salary increase, when you have a huge salary, don't forget to pay tax to the government. Okay, right. That's why, uh, as for me, okay, once my salary increase, okay, I need to think about how to reduce my tax payment to government. Okay, why I'm said I'm re want, I plan to reduce my tax payment to government because I'm not the person who give uh, money to to uh, an organization who I didn't get the benefits. So instead of pay the tax to the government, I switch pay more zakat to the government. Okay, actually the same thing, but we look on provide more benefits to other group who uh, need more money for them. Okay, right. So later on, we talk about tax. Later on, we look on how to reduce our tax payment using rebate called zakat. Okay, right. Next one, once your age 50, your age 55, I mean, example, Sir Abu, right? Uh, 56, his career development uh, is going to end actually. Okay, gaji dah banyak dah. Okay, so asset pun dia dah banyak. Now, he plan for the retirement. Okay, right. So, age of retirement, okay, basically, orang-orang yang retired, kalau kata parents you sedang bekerja dan akan retired, check, tengok dia punya asset berapa banyak, check dia punya, dia punya liabilities berapa banyak. Why? Because uh, some of parent, okay, right, still have a loan to pay. I mean, basically, kalau loan paling lama ni adalah housing loan lah, ataupun mortgage loan. Okay, sebab basically, mortgage loan 30 years incurred, 30 years tenure period. Okay. Car loan, uh, motor loan, auto auto loan, nine years or five years. Okay, depends on five years, boleh, seven years, boleh, nine years, boleh, depends. Okay, right. Those who are uh, in age of retirement or retirement period, they think on to make sure that they are debt free. Okay, why? Because of they want to have a comfortable standard of living. Hidup yang selesa kan, tak fikir, tak serabut wasa hutang. Bila kita dah tua, kita tak nak fikir pasal hutang. Kita nak fikir, kita nak relax, kita nak kita nak vacation, kita nak pergi jalan-jalan sana-sini, kita nak kita nak rest. 
Okay sebenarnya kita tak nak tahu pun apa benda yang hutang-hutang ni. So that's why those you tengok orang-orang yang tayyak ni dia relax boleh minum kopi, duduk kedai lama-lama kan. Dia tak, tak ada masalah sebab dia tak ada hutang kan. Ataupun dia ada masalah tapi dia buat tak tahu jangan masalah. Itulah two different cases eh. Okay. Right. And kalau you tengok umur you sekarang pun, okay parents you pun think about your kata kalau you ada brother, sisters, think on preparation kalau you ada eh. Right. So think about uh, preparation for their son, their daughters and think about other, other expenses. Okay, maybe because of you need, uh, uh, you need uh, education more. Okay, I mean you, you need to go to, to for tertiary education or you need to purchase a car, you need to purchase some other things. Okay, which need for the life. So cost-cost ni, that's why parents tu kena tahu. Okay, kena ada a good financial help sebenarnya. Right, and the last one adalah age of old. Okay, I mentioned here age of old. Okay, bila kita tua, kita think on um, health actually. Okay, so more money that you have will if, okay, we look on a, uh, I think AAC 302 mentioned you in the chapter 3 mentioned about um, meeting consumer need, age 60 health. Okay age 60 healthy and age 60 unhealthy. If you're good in health, okay, right, your medical bills might be lower. Okay, your hospitalization cost might be lower. If you're not in a good health, okay, you incur more on your medical bill, your hospitalization, your medicine, your other things. Okay, right. And I didn't mention here about age of old, incur more on a cost of um, uh, after death, okay, cost selepas mati, okay. Ni pun ada kena masuk sekali dalam age of old ni, okay. Sebab bila kita mati kita fikir, okay, contoh high ride, okay, contoh kos ke bumi, kos kubur, kos sebab ini semua kos-kos yang kita kena fikir yang kita kena bayar, kita kena tanggung, okay. So these are talk about age of financial health, okay. So I'm finished with the first uh, outcome. Now, we look on the second outcome, we talk about the financial planning process but before that, we look on what is important on financial planning and what the advantage of financial planning. Okay, right. So, there's a five thing uh, keep on why the financial planning is so important. First one is lifestyle, lifestyle plan. Okay, so if you have a good financial planning, means that you being able to allocate a sum of money for a lifestyle plan. Okay, you tahu macam mana allocate your fund, you tahu macam mana allocate your investment, you know how to allocate your money for education, you know how to allocate money for parents if if you, uh, if the parents with you, I mean the parents stay with you. Okay, uh, and you think about, I mean you know how uh, uh, allocation of money for vacation especially, okay, kita nak lifestyle kita, lifestyle yang yang sihat, okay, tak nak yang apa, stress and so on, kita tak nak benda tu. So, bila dia macam tu, means that kita kena plan betul-betul dengan fund yang kita ada. So, kalau tak ada fund, susah juga kan. Kita boleh cakap tapi tak boleh pergi, susah juga kan. Right? Macam tu, macam sekarang kan, PKPB kan, tak boleh keluar. So, kita bukan susah. Macam saya tak boleh keluar kan. So, kita jadi susah hati sebabnya kita tak boleh nak buat macam-macam plan yang kita dah, kita dah rancang pada awal-awal tahun ataupun pada tengah tahun. Okay, depends on your plan actually. Right. Second important thing is um, enhance your quality of life. Okay. Right. So basically example here, um, those um, who work with the blue chip company or big company in Malaysia, okay, or established company in Malaysia, they have their own uh, retirement plan. Okay. Except for those who work with the government. As for me, example, Okay, I work with UITM, the statutory body, badan berkanun, okay, bukan government 100%, okay, the statutory body, whereby the UITM plan for their staff on what uh, the amount, I mean, what are the, the fund that the, 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 the staff will receive uh, during retirement period, okay, kalau you tengok contohnya army, force, okay, right, uh, apa lagi, navy, okay, uh, they, they have the plan, they have the plan for their their staff for their retiree. Okay, dia orang ada dia punya dia orang punya apa? Uh, 
rancangan-rancangan dia orang buat untuk dia punya staff lah dan apa besar dia askar nak buat apa lepas tu kan so dia bagi tahu so dia ada list of job yang dia orang boleh bagi mean that you you build up your skills sebenarnya okey kita cari skills before, before kita retire okey right and if you have a good financial planning it being okey it give you a sense of freedom so you tak ada rasa stress tak ada rasa alamat hutang kan okey right Basically kita akan berhutang tapi kita kena tahu cara mengurus hutang. Okay sebab itulah bawa apa ni uh, bank negara ada satu uh, organisation yang manage hutang. Okay PIDM tu. Okay uh, deposit hutang tu. Okay De- uh, perbadanan uh, insurance dan deposit tu. Okay yang mana dia uh, apa ni dia provide some um, consultation okay to the customer okay right bawa PIDM tu dia ada satu yang uh, apa ni agensi kewangan pengurus IKPK tu okay agensi kewangan agensi kaunseling pengurusan kewangan tu okay yang tu dia ada uruskan pasal macam ni kita nak free from that okay you ada hutang macam ni kita nak free from that okay macam nak, nak bayar hutang so example Um, give you a current example, okay, right. During PKP or MCO, okay, Movement Control Order, whereby government provide us or provide those who have a loan with the bank, um, a free period, we call it as a free period, okay, from March until September. So, six month free period, free, free payment of loan, okay, right. And government also So to provide another uh, three months period for those who unable to pay their loan. So from October, November until December. But this thing that you need to to contact to the bank to inform to the bank about uh, your extension of the period. Okay. Now, what is the good things on on uh, moratorium? Okay. The good thing from moratorium is that you are free to use the money that. Actually, you uh, that previously used for payment on the loan. Okay, so lebihan duit tadi, okay, uh, apa ni? Uh, exceeding money from the loan tadi yang you tak guna yang bayar loan sepatutnya you tak bayar, so you boleh guna untuk survival for almost nine month. Okay, then after that, okay, next year on January you pay, you start to pay back the loan. Okay, right, but dia ada dia punya dia punya disadvantage kat sini. So if you take the moratorium means that there's a possibility that your period of loan will some call have extension. Okay. Bank terpaksa extend. Kenapa bank terpaksa extend? Because of during the first six months or the total nine months that you didn't pay any amount to the bank or any fund to the bank means that the bank incurred loss. So once bank incurred loss bank need to search or look into how to uh, to recover back okay the loss okay so in uh, the only way that they have is provide extension to those who taking the moratorium okay so that's why there's a there's a, a talk from people okay uh, there's a discussion from people outside okay or people in, in 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 the bank see that if you think you being able you able to purchase uh, sorry you pay you, you able to pay the loan okay don't take the moratorium so you didn't have the problem in extension and so on. but a few i mean there's a people who have problem on uh, on uh, on the loan on the money because they need to use the money but other people didn't have the problem so you have the choice actually okay think on which which choice is suitable for you looking on your current financial condition okay the fourth one we talk about the improved relationship okay so if you have a good plan so you know how to manage your family okay education cost uh, expenditure and other things okay right and the last one on importance of financial planning is if you have the financial plan means that is a This is a one of the key for financial success. Okay, right. 
Do you ada plan? Okay, right. I mentioned to you last last uh, lecture says that if you have the plan, okay, means that you know, okay, so means that you have failed to plan. So you, if you fail to plan, means that you have failed on planning actually. Okay, right. So kalau kita tak plan, so, so ataupun kita tak rancang yang betul, maka kita yang yang sebenarnya mencari kegagalan itu sendiri. So, that's why on this topic, we provide you the process on how to do the financial plan. Okay, right. I didn't say the better or good, but it depends on the condition, on your financial condition actually. Next one, talk about the advantage of financial planning. Increase your effectiveness in obtaining and using and protecting your financial resources, increase your financial affair, okay, right. improve your personal relationship and sense of freedom is almost like important, okay. Now, look on financial planning process, okay. That's the sixth step in financial planning process, okay, right. Start with the determine current financial situation, develop your financial goals, identify alternative cause of action, evaluate alternative, means that you look on the risk, you look on economic factor, you look on life situation, okay, you look on time value of money, so here time value of money talk about a calculation, uh, um, use, uh, sorry, a simple calculation uh, based on the knowledge you, that you have uh, in ASC 303 FM, okay, a simple one, okay, right, and fifth, uh, stage is talk about the create and implement. So once you have all the things, all all the information, uh, you set all the information. Now you you create the plan and you implement. Look on the plan, okay. And the last one is we review, okay. All right. So now, first step is determine your current financial situation. So here means that you need to look into your income, okay. You need to look on your expenses. You look on your debts, okay, right. Debts can can be divided into short-term debts or long-term debts, okay. Next one, prepare a list of current assets. So here is almost like you doing your accounting, okay. You look on your asset, on left hand side. Look on the asset, either current asset or fixed asset. You need to look into the asset. Why? Because in basic account term or basic account um, uh, fee, uh, sorry, um, uh, word or keyword is that your asset must be able to cover your liabilities and your net worth. Asset is equal to the liabilities plus net worth. Okay. So if you have a less asset, more liabilities means that you are in the condition of bankrupt. Okay. Or suffer. Okay. Or not a financial freedom. Okay, right. And on the first step also, you need to match your financial goal with your income. Okay, right. So here is that you need to look, okay, what's your income? What's your another earning? Okay, example, if you have the car, you 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 sell the car to get the money or uh, you rent the car to other people. If you have the house, you rent the house to other people. So these are the potential earning for you, okay, right? So from the, your income, so you here you need to match with your financial goal. So let's say you uh, your plan for short term plan, okay, within the two years from now or within one years from now, you need uh, at least you have this is amount of money, okay. I didn't teach you on how to be a rich people, okay. I teach you how to make a proper uh, wealth. Okay, but right. saya tak ajar you untuk jadi kaya. Saya ajar you untuk jadi macam ni, you nak uruskan duit yang betul. Okay, manage your your money. Manage manage your fund, manage your asset. Okay, nak jadi kaya bukan dalam dalam kod ni. Sebab jadi kaya tak payah susah. Senang je nak jadi kaya kan. Tapi nak manage betul bukan senang. Okay, right. So, second step is develop your financial goals. Okay, so here uh, some key on the second step, sorry, the second step. Identify uh, 
about the money and the reason for those feeling. So, kenapa you nak ada duit and apa 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 sebab ni? Okay, so first one. Second one, determine your uh, source kat mana nak dapatkan duit-duit tadi. Okay, and then also determine the effect of economy towards your goal. Okay, so you kena tahu apa efek-efek ekonomi. Okay, contoh example, um, economy factor, one of economy factor, GDP, okay, price, uh, consumer price index, um, uh, unemployment rate, uh, okay, economic recession, these are the economic, economic, economic jargon that can affect or will affect on your goals and your priority. So you should think about your goal, you should think about which the first priority, which are the core priority for you. Okay, example, you are, you habis belajar, apa priority yang pertama? Okay, beli kereta, beli rumah dan sebagainya. So, biasanya orang habis, habis belajar je, first priority dia cari kerja, at least ada kenderaan yang boleh guna. Kalau tak ada pun, gunalah public transport. Okay, lagi senang. Tak ada, tak ada, tak ada cost wear and time you kena fikirkan, contoh. Okay, right. Next one, make sure that your goals, okay, specific. Okay, your goals must be specific. Goals tu mesti jelas. Okay. Apa yang you rancang tu mesti jelas. Okay. And look on your current situation. Okay. You buat rancangan ni mesti kena tengok apa rancangan-rancangan you nak buat. Okay. Adakah suit dengan keadaan you atau tidak. Okay. Right. So in order to determine the financial goal here. Yeah, right. It can divide into two. One is the timing of the goal. Second one is talk about goal for different financial need. Okay. Timing of the goal means that uh, allocation of time to achieve the goal. How much allocation of time that you need to achieve the goal? Okay, short term, immediate term, a long term. Okay, um, basically you should think about uh, the long term more as compared to the short term and immediate term. Kenapa? Sebab bila kita fikir untuk long term, kita tahu apa short term yang akan boleh fill in dalam long term tadi. Okay, biasanya kita akan fikir jauh dulu. So, bila kita nampak jauh, kita akan nampak yang dekat-dekat ni kita boleh suit in. Kita boleh fill in terus. Okay, tak susah. Okay, so senang kita nak monitor, senang kita nak manage. Okay, it's manageable. Okay, uh, and it's much better as compared to think about short term. Fikir pendek-pendek, okay, fikir and then habis lepas tu nak buat apa? So, you tak ada plan. So, bila you fikir panjang, jama sikit, you akan tahu apa you nak plan. Right. Second one, okay, financial goal tadi ada dua kan. Second one is goal for different needs means that what the financial need can drive for the goal. Okay, apa financial need yang boleh yang boleh memacu anda untuk dapatkan goal tadi. Okay, right. So kat sini we look on consumer product goal, look on pro durable product goal, intangible purchase goal. These are uh, the goals that you need into or the financial need that can drive you for the, in order to achieve your financial goals. Okay, right. Now, in order to set the goal, okay, I mentioned here, I put here, okay, on the slide, say that the word of smart. Okay, right. Smart is per, is is a is a word for those who need a guideline on setting of the goal. Okay, bila kita nak buat goal ni, dia kena ada satu uh, satu base dia. Okay, ataupun satu dia punya apa keyword yang kita kena pegang, ataupun key point yang kita pegang. Okay, atau key term yang kita kena pegang. So key term here is smart. Okay, S M A R T. Right, smart S refer to the specific, M refer to measurable, A refer to the action, R refer to realistic, T refer to the time. Okay, goals yang you buat mesti specific. Okay, right, and goals mah goals yang you buat tu mesti boleh kita boleh measure. Saya cakap, saya cakap tadi goals tu mesti specific. Okay, right, and it can be identified in your financial activity through action. So action apa kita boleh buat? Okay. And realistic. Okay. The, the goal that you create or you design must be realistic. Okay. That's why I said, I said before I mentioned, I always mention, look on your income. You on your current income, look on your current situation. So what are the best that suitable plan for you? Okay. And the time. Okay. Right. So time here refer to the how long that you think the goal can be achieved. Okay, right. 
Sec third stage call identify alternative cause of action. Okay, right. So possible cause can be continue the same cause of action. Okay, right. Expand the current situation, change the current situation, or take a new cause of action. So these are the, the, the alternative cause of action that can occur to your plan, to your financial plan actually. Okay, so you must be creative on doing or making the decision. Okay, because creativity is a vital for us to look on the effective choice. Okay, right. So, kena kreatif dalam kita nak buat ni. Kena boleh ubah-ubah. Okay, benda tu dia macam tak tak fix sangat. Okay, tetapi dia jelas. Okay, dia ada dia, dia, dia punya point dekat situ yang you kena pegang. You kena tahu benda tu kita kena tahu kita boleh dapat. Benda tu dia dia realistik. Okay, dia tak boleh yang yang dia mesti boleh berubah bergantung pada keadaan. Sebab keadaan ekonomi berubah. Keadaan ekonomi tidak tetap. So, you kena fikir apa cara yang boleh kita ubah plan kita supaya boleh meet dengan goal kita tadi. Okay, right. Do nothing can be the dangerous alternative. Kalau tak buat apa-apa lagi masalah. Kalau tak ada plan lagi masalah. Kalau tak ada apa-apa action lagi masalah. Okay, so you need to have at least a plan and work on the plan. Okay, now fourth one, evaluate your alternative. Tadi kita dah tahu alternative apa. Now we look on how to evaluate, how to do the evaluation of the alternative. Okay, right. Now, Consequence, okay, kesan daripada choice tadi, okay, akan ada dua benda ni. Pertama adalah opportunity cost, second one adalah uh, trade off. Okay, so what it mean by opportunity cost? Benda ni you dah belajar masa you ambil economic dulu. Okay, so opportunity cost means that you give up on one things, on one choice and you take another choice. Okay, you lepaskan sesuatu untuk you dapatkan sesuatu. You tak boleh ambil dua-dua. Okay, you nak kereta, you nak rumah. Tak boleh ambil dua-dua sekali lah, kan. You nak uh, apa ni, you nak apa ni, you nak mak you nak makan A, you nak makan B. You tak boleh makan dulu, you kena makan satu dulu. Okay. Right. So, you kena lepaskan. So, lepaskan tu adalah opportunity cost. Okay. So, opportunity cost akan incur dalam your plan. Okay. You nak dapat, you nak kerja dekat KL atau you nak kerja dekat sini. Kerja kat KL, gaji dia RM4,000. Kerja kat sini, gaji dia RM2,000. Contoh. Kerja kat Tapah, contoh. Tapi kerja kat Tapah, less traffic <coughs> apa lagi um, problem yang lain mungkin adalah kan makan 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 tak apa sedap macam KL dan sebagainya <coughs> but then itu kos yang you kena kena lepaskan okey kalau you ambil kerja kat KL 4000 belum kita kita kira pasal makan belum kita kira pasal ada kos so silap-silap gaji 4000 tinggal 1000 kerja kat tapak tadi gaji 2000 mungkin ada lebih 1000 setengah tewa rumah 500 contoh Makan dalam mungkin ada seribu dua lebih. Ha, so itu. So ada cost yang you kena lepas kan. So nama dia adalah opportunity cost. Okay. Trade off means that um, decision. Okay. Me, trade off is a decision that cannot always be major in a dollar. Ada benda yang tak boleh kita major gunakan duit pun. Okay. So sometimes kita akan major dia. Kita gunakan uh, time. Okay, so ini adalah choice. Masa kita buat tu, oh ni masa je sebabkan masa je. Kalau kerja duduk kat apa tiga tahun ni, buat masa je. Lepas tiga tahun mesti dah habis lah. So you kisahkan tu. Okay, dia tak major pasal duit pun. Dia major pasal masa kat sini. Ya, ataupun you kerja kat company ni, tak apalah dua tahun pun tak apa. At least dua tahun kau dah dapat experience and then next one, bila pergi tempat lain, kita dah ada experience lain. Example. Now, so since you have the choice, okay, now you, you evaluate. Okay, you evaluate the choice using the risk. Okay, right. So, any decision that you made incurred uncertainty. Okay, benda tak pasti. Apa saja buat mesti ada benda tak pasti yang tak tahu apa benda yang akan berlaku. Contoh, you pasti tak bila COVID ni habis, you tak pasti. You tahu tak bila bila uh, bila vaksin tu akan keluar, you pun tak pasti. Okay, memang ada orang buat vaksin-vaksin tapi tak tahu. Berapa harga pun tak tahu. Bila boleh apply pun tak tahu. Apa cara nak apply pun tak tahu. Okay, so banyak benda yang tak pasti. Memang semuanya adalah benda yang tak pasti. Okay. Talk about risk. Risk is uncertain. Okay. Right. So the best way to analyze and minimize risk is to get information from your source. Tadi kita cerita pasal source kan. So kita kena tengok source kita. So dari situ kita akan tahu macam mana cara kita nak minimize. Kita tak boleh nak kita tak boleh nak exploit terus. 
ataupun kita tak boleh kita boleh retain tapi kita rasa bila kita retain kita tak buat tak buat sesuatu kita hanya retain je terima je okey tak apa betul relax tak boleh so kita kena plan so yang penting kita kena minimize eh, and look on another another way on solving the problem okey now tadi kita cerita pasal opportunity cost no now saya buat kat sini so i put here opportunity cost versus financial acquisition okey so opportunity cost can be divided to two first one is personal opportunity cost that relate to your time relate to your effort relate to your health second one financial opportunity cost relate to your relate to the interest these things relate to the financial calculation sorry financial uh, financial calculation okay right um, your principal your interest uh, how liquid the asset okay how safety the investment and so on okay now financial acquisition relate to your car automobile your home your education cost your investment your coverage of insurance okay your fund for retirement so these are the things so that's why opportunity cost and acquisition must balance okay kalau kita balance dia akan ada something wrong somewhere nanti okay next one talk about financial opportunity cost so here relate to the time value of money okay so as i cakap tadi relate dengan your punya financial maths yang you dah belajar semester lepas okay right but one but on this code okay a simple calculation only don't worry tak susah-susah pun okay but knowledge from that uh, code can be applied to this code okay from the fm you can apply to this code okay basically look on time value of money we talk about our uh, investment okay right so talk about future value future value means that accumulated value okay so accumulated value of your single amount and accumulated value of a uh, series of deposit annuity okay so series of is annuity okay present value on single amount and present value of annuity okay right a simple example here um look on accumulated value on single amount contohnya you pergi asb okay and then ataupun you pergi bank Okay, ataupun you pergi tabung haji, you letak je duit dalam tu. Okay, you letak duit sekali, you letak RM10,000, tu dah you buat tak tahu. So, you pump in money, a single amount of money. And then you buat tak tahu. And then after a few years, you look on the account, you letak RM10,000 tadi, tiba-tiba dalam account je dia dah RM13,000. So, duit tu tadi dah beranak. Saya nak cakap bahasa mudah kan? Ataupun dah accumulate. Okay, right. So, itu. Atau, uh, you... Uh, put in money on your retirement fund. Okay, contohnya saya buat invest, saya pump in, uh, saya, sorry, saya allocate my own uh, money every, uh, sorry, uh, uh, every, sorry, every time during uh, salary payment by the UITM, saya akan make some allocation of money and pump in dalam EPF account. Okay, EPF is for retirement plan. Okay, so, so every time saya letak duit, so duit tu dia akan generate. Okay, so, kalau dulu, okay, dulu sebelum ni kita government, eh, sorry, UITM akan buat. So, every time you sampai uh, masanya gaji je dah dapat je, dia akan pot, dia akan potong you punya gaji tu untuk masuk dalam EPF. So, every month dia akan buat. Sampailah you tak nak lagi join dengan EPF. So, itu kita kena sedia as a annuity lah. So, series of payment kan. Ya, ada series of payment tu nama dia adalah annuity. Sama dengan present value kan. Kita nak kira berapa banyak kita kena ada untuk nanti. Contohnya, present value on single mom ni, let's say lah you dah kerja 30 tahun so you plan berapa yang you kena ada bila umur you 60 nanti contoh so ataupun you nak tahu berapa yang you nak ada amount yang betul-betul kena pakai untuk uh, dep, uh, umur you 60 nanti so present value, so kira-kira okay, kena ada 100, 200 ribu masa umur 60 kena ada 200 ribu, so itu okay, ataupun uh, present value of serious or deposit ataupun annuity ni let's, uh, let's say uh, saya kerja dengan government kan, saya kerja dengan UITM So once I am retired at age 60, uh, uh, the government will plan for me on how to pay a series of amount, okay, a series of amount to me during retirement period. Okay, government akan bayar, okay, tiap-tiap bulan akan dapat RM2,000 contoh, RM2,000, RM2,000 lah. Sampailah you mati. So bila you mati, duit, duit, duit pension tu akan habis. Ataupun mungkin dia akan, dia akan bayar kepada designated beneficiary, depends lah. Okay. Kalau duit dia bayar tu jumlah dia dah habis ataupun jumlah dia dah cukup dengan salary yang, sorry, servis yang you dah bagi so dia tak ada lebihan bayaran. 
kalau dia you baru 2 tahun dibayar dan you mati dan kat situ dia akan ada uh, payment back to the designated beneficiary okay right so this one the fourth step fifth step we talk about okay create and implement so you know the you know the cost you know the action you know the opportunity cost you know the financial opportunity cost you know the acquisition and so on all things that you in the plan now you create the plan okay you dah tahu dah apa input input dah ada okay now we we develop okay you develop the action plan okay to identify the method or the solution to achieve the financial goal okay right um possible plan uh can do through increasing the saving, reducing the spending or making provision for the tax. Okay, yang ni kena ada lah. Bila kita increasekan saving kita, kita kurangkan belanja kita. So, mudah kata kita boleh monitor semua duit kita. Oh, untuk monitor kita punya income tadi. Right. So, to implement the action, okay, you need assistance from others. Okay. That's why ada orang yang dia buat plan dia, dia tak, dia tak pasti. So, dia jumpa dengan those financial plan, those so certified financial planner or you uh, go to the bank and ask for the uh, ask for them to look on your whether your plan is is a proper plan or not or manageable or not or can be achieved or not okay or else you can look into you can do by your own through using uh, some information from internet source you buat sini tengok, you buat, okay, betul tak betul? Okay, check, oh ni, ni cara kita belajar, okay, right, even it's not a proper way, but at least you have the method, okay, right, contoh saya, saya saya plan saya punya, uh, apa ni, financial plan saya, saya buat, saya buat sendiri, saya tak refer pun mana-mana, tapi saya cari kat internet apa dia buat, cara dia buat, atau saya dengar daripada radio dan sebagainya, so saya guna, I use the all information I receive, then I, I put in, in my plan, Okay, so I, saya allocate, okay, ada investment, contoh saya buat investment dengan suku, okay, government are, are last, I think so last August introduce suku to the public, so you boleh beli suku RM500 je contoh kan, so I I buy I buy suku, I go to the bank, I buy um, apa ni, some as, uh, sorry, uh, unit trust from bank, okay, and then I go to uh, stock market, look on which the stock market that being able to purchase okay taklah banyak-banyak janji at least kita tahu so what i'm doing here is that i'm diversify my portfolio so means that saya tahu kalau saya tak ada duit saya ada source yang lain saya boleh dapat okay ataupun kalau saya tak ada duit saya ada fund yang saya ada simpan contoh dalam tabung haji dalam bank dalam ASB saya tak ada okay so saya buat macam tu so you do the plan and you look, and you look on the, uh, whether the plan is work or not so you two yang kena betul, kena tengok. Okay, and the last step on financial planning process is review and revise your plan. Tengok balik plan you buat tadi, whether the plan is achieve your goals or not, especially your financial goals. Kalau tak achieve, then you need to restructure, re-evaluate. Okay, so ini yang you kena buat. So the more frequent review, okay, re required for personal changing social and economic factor. Sebab apa? Plan kita ni mesti mesti sentiasa berubah. Contoh, you pun tak tahu yang 2020 ekonomi akan jadi macam ni. Okay, dan kita pun tak tahu apa akan jadi pada 2021. So, siapa yang dah ada plan, so dia akan revise balik plan dia. So, macam mana nak buat? Contoh, kalau you kerja. Okay, tiba-tiba tak kerja. Tiba-tiba kena terminate, kena retrench by the company. Contohnya, I was mentioned to you last class, last lecture. Those who retrench by the company, so what a plan for them? Okay, Totally person, uh, their, their personal life is totally changing. Berubah dengan serta-mertanya. Tak tahu apa nak buat kan. Contoh contohnya like you being terminated by the company, you mesti confused, mesti rasa macam apa salah saya sampai you kena terminate. So you, that's why kalau orang yang cepat bertindak, dia fikir okay takpelah. Eh, dapat duit, kita fikir cara lain. So that's why kalau you perasan, kalau you tengok especially dalam dalam social media, uh, previously he was a pilot currently he also a pilot but pilot for motorcycle okay jadi buat kerja grab buat kerja food panda dia buat at least dapat duit daripada tak dapat duit langsung at least sekarang ada duit juga so at least life dia dia ada plan yang buat okey kena ubah tak boleh tunggu ni tidak dia susah okey uh, belanja dah banyak hutang banyak expenditure banyak dan sebagainya dia kena fikirkan 
So this is related to the economic factor, perubahan kan. So kita pun tak tahu. Okay, right. And regular review of decision making can help us on making priority adjustment to achieve financial goal. Okay, right. Now. Okay, so this is the last outcome for this chapter is to understand on lifetime financial plan. Okay, right. So under lifetime financial plan, I mentioned to you on uh, at early class is that on this chapter, I'm going to explain roughly about the whole story about the things that you're going to learn. Okay, in the in the overall cost. Okay, of personal financial planning. Okay, later on you learn about the budget budget planning. Okay, so what is the budget planning? Okay, day to day financial activities, right? And later on you need to look the previous knowledge the previous uh, information that you learn during your semester one about financial ratio. I think you learn about financial ratio. Liquidity ratio, activity ratio, what is the liquidity ratio, what is the activity ratio, what is the profitability ratio, what is the growth ratio, what is the market ratio, what is the leverage ratio, okay? And I was mentioned to you about opportunity cost. There's a two opportunity cost, personal opportunity cost and financial opportunity cost, okay? Right, so next one, once you know about the financial budget planning, okay, Later on, you also learn about the uh, managing your cash flow, okay, managing your basic need. I mentioned to you also about asset must equal to liability and net worth, okay. Kalau tidak, akan ada masalah, right. And uh, this also uh, you also learn during your semester one about accounting, okay, about the asset, how to do, uh, sorry, how uh, uh, to write down the asset, okay, and asset, uh, sorry, types of asset, okay, and the types of liability, and then from that, how you're going to do on your income statement, your balance sheet, okay, your cash budgeting, okay, your cash flow and so on, right. The next, uh, the next topic, next week, you're going to learn about risk management, insurance and takaful planning, okay, right. So, these things also being covered during AAC 172. Okay, either with me or maybe, um, maybe with the Miss Maria or maybe with the Dr. Zaki or maybe with the Sir Abu. Okay, right. So, risk management. So, this thing also was covered during AC302 about risk management, the process of risk management and then the, the technique. Okay, there's a five technique in risk management, retain, um, accept, reduce, uh, exploit. Okay. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of technique actually, okay, right, the financial, uh, sorry, the risk management process start with the, you uh, gather the information, gather the risk, okay, get, uh, know about the exposure, okay, right, and until you implement and monitor the risk management. Risk management not only focus on company process. Company have their own risk management process called enterprise risk management. Okay, right. But do for us is a personal risk management. So we, whereby we we need to look into what are the risks that incurred to us, especially on financial risk or any other risk that related to us. Okay, right. So that's why you should know about uh, risk management. And on this topic also, we uh, we're going to learn about the insurance. Okay, you know. Uh, uh, life insurance, okay, this is commercial insurance, life insurance, general insurance, okay? and then also takaful insurance, okay, or takaful, we didn't call it takaful insurance, we call it takaful, okay, right, so insurance here means that you, we're going to cover on uh, life insurance about what is term insurance, what is the whole life, what is endowment, okay, term provide you uh, temporary protection, so it's actually one year, two years, four years, five years, 60 years, and so on, it, there's a specified period provided on coverage, right? Whole life insurance means that permanent insurance cover you until you die. Endowment insurance is almost like combination of term and whole life or permanent, okay? And general insurance, motor insurance, auto insurance, health insurance, sorry, healthcare insurance, aviation insurance, um, marine insurance, glass insurance, there's a lot of... I. If I'm not mistaken, there's a 23 product of general insurance. 
and takaful. Okay, takaful means that sharing concept. Okay, whereby three principal prohibited in takaful, garam masih and riba. So this thing we're going to learn about, you. sorry, you're going to learn about this risk management. I mean, so-called recap back what you was went through during the year of early study and middle of year of study. Okay. Um, next one, um, you also learn about investment planning. Okay. So what are the suitable investment uh, that can match your goals? your financial goal especially and your objective right so if you also look into the risk in management okay uh, what is the investment planning what is investment factor that affect to your planning okay if i'm not mistaken there's a four factor okay income level um, the time okay right and then the tenure all right and other factors and which uh, which strategy that suitable for the investment planning and Instrument of in financial planning, okay. There's a lot of instrument in financial planning. Uh, look on money market, okay. There's a stocks, okay. I mean, um, share, right. There's a common stock, common share. There's a preferred stock, preferred share, the same name, okay. Right, bond, okay. Gold investment, um, unit trust investment, okay. Right, uh, estate investment, so there's a lots of investment instrument actually exist in Malaysian market. So we focus on Malaysian market. Eh? Right. Next one. Once you have the money, once you have the, the proper way on managing your life through you, you provide provide protection on your insurance protection or insurance coverage. Now, we're going to learn about the tax planning. Okay. So you get you gain the money from your organization or your, your own business. Now you need to pay some uh cost to the government called tax okay right so government provide you give you goods and service so means that you need to pay back the goods and service through using the tax okay but not all people are governed or need to pay for the tax okay because under inland revenue board or in uh, inland revenue okay inland revenue council or inland revenue board irb okay ataupun lembaga hasil dalam negeri mention here that those salary if, not, if i'm not mistaken those uh, yearly salary not more than 35000 you are not being, uh, you are un, sorry you are un, ineligible to pay for the tax okay so those who earn more than 35000 so you are eligible so you are required to pay for the tax so there's a there's a amount of salary that that government stated to pay for the tax Okay, right. Kenapa orang yang gaji, uh, jumlah gaji dia di bawah RM30,000 tak kena? Sebab kalau kita kira pun dia sebenarnya dah dikira kalau dekat, kalau dia duduk kat bandar, dia boleh kira sebagai orang yang berada dalam uh, dalam golongan miskin tegar. Okay, miskin tegar bandar ataupun miskin bandar dia panggil. Kalau orang miskin bandar ni tak payah bayar tax pun sebenarnya. Okay, right. Orang yang kerja apa ni, um, cleaner tu gaji dia RM800,000 dua. Kalau dia kira kali dengan RM12 pun, kalau RM100,000 baru RM12,000. Dia okay, belum tolak lagi PF dan sebagainya. So rasanya macam tak cukup ataupun gaji dia 2,000, 2,000 kali dengan 12 baru 24,000. Uh, memang tak cukup pun sebenarnya nak cover untuk untuk dia bayar tax. So memang dia tak tak apa ni tak perlu risau untuk tax tu. So. Okay tapi macam saya ha, macam Asa Abu and Dr. Zach and we are required to pay or we are we are forced to pay for the tax but we have a plan. Okay we move instead of pay tax we 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 change to pay more zakat as, as compared to pay tax to the government. Okay, I'm not against government but I'm using another alternative to give my give back to the government. Okay, right. Next one about retirement planning. Okay, purpose you do on planning for retirement is to make sure that comfortable standard of living. This is the keyword for retirement. Comfortable standard of living. Kita nak hidup selesa masa kita pension, masa kita bersara. Kita tak nak hidup sengsara. Sengsara hutang dan sebagainya. Kita tak nak fikir. Okay. Sebab tu lah kalau you tengok parents you, dia dah fikir plan untuk you apa nak buat. You dia bagi you kereta contohnya, dia bagi you rumah, dia bagi you tanah contohnya. So dia dah, you dah ada dah. Okay. Tapi benda ni semuanya kena bertulis. So cara nak macam nak tulis? Under the estate planning. So under the estate planning here okay um, there's a minister okay who will monitor your your wish. Okay. And 
Jangan you lupa juga Okay uh, There's a tax incurred Okay To those who uh, Even Even though He was died Or he died Okay Or he death actually So there's a tax incurred to them Okay Right So Under the estate planning here We're going to learn about the estate planning The area on estate planning The phase of estate planning And so on Okay Dalam estate planning ni Subject uh, topik, topik yang sangat menarik Sebab you, you akan belajar pasal will Okay Pasal wasiat You akan belajar pasal Apa ni uh, Probate estate Okay Dan sebagainya macam-macam So Bila kita plan Untuk retirement planning ni Ada akan include estate planning kat sini Okay Sebab, sebab tu lah bila Contohnya saya ambil contoh Case Abam Okay Allah Abam Okay uh, Dia tak sempat nak buat wasiat So apa yang berlaku kat dia adalah Bila uh, Dia ada banyak aset Ha, dia akan jadi satu satu isu yang besar kepada keluarga Terutamanya kepada Dia punya uh, Isteri dan anak dia tu Okay Kita memang kesian sebab sepatutnya uh, Benda ni tak tak perlu pun dibesar-besarkan Sepatutnya dalam keluarga-keluarga saja. Tapi jadi besar Dia menjadi satu isu So bila jadi isu maka orang melihat benda ni adalah satu masalah So sepatutnya dia bukan masalah yang besar Okay Sebab tu before kita nak mati Okay You tak tahu bila you nak mati sebab tu lah you kena prepare Sebab tu in Islam One of the method that we we uh, uh, Sorry Islam apply is You make Wasiat Okay Sebab kalau you tak buat wasiat Dia akan ada masalah Contohnya pembagian harta tu menggunakan sistem faraid dalam Islam Okay So another alternative From wasiat or from will Kita gunakan nama dia hibah Hibah tu adalah uh, Apa ni hadiah kepada penama-penama yang kita rasa Tak kisah siapa pun nama Contoh saya ada Saya ada kereta Saya nak hibahkan dia ni dekat orang A Dekat orang B Dekat orang C contohnya So bila saya mati nanti Orang ni akan dapat Contohnya Ataupun saya ada duit dalam bank So orang ni Okay Saya hibahkan duit ni Akaun duit dalam akaun saya ni Untuk parent saya Contoh So kita hibah Tu adalah method yang Islam apply So bagus sebenarnya Dah tahu dah Semua dah ada dah Okay Right Semua kita nak tahu Secara jelasnya Nanti you akan belajar lah Nanti Start from retirement planning, asset planning We are covered by Dr. Zach Okay, right So, I think that's all for um, Today lecture So, I will cover you about the second second chapter Okay, right And this in the second chapter uh, Namely as a nature uh, And product, uh, sorry, financial planning Right, so I explain to you about uh, the age of financial help okay, uh, the financial planning process, the six stage of financial planning process so you should know about the financial planning process okay, right and then um, I also mentioned about one of the financial planning process about talk about uh, opportunity cost talk about time value of money okay, and the last part, the last outcome in this chapter talk about the financial plan okay, so some overview about the financial plan uh, regards to your budgeting, regards to your tax, regards to your insurance, regards to your investment, uh, retirement and estate. Right. So I think I'm done for today. Um, I'm looking for the question that if you have the question and you can uh, raise out the question.